Welcome to our review on mole calculations. So the first thing that we're actually going to use our mole for is to actually calculate masses. So what we'd actually need to do is the mass in grams equals the molar mass, which is in grams per mole, times by the amount in moles. So the kind of question we could get is shown in the second box there. Nitrogen reacts with hydrogen to produce ammonia, and you've got the balance symbol equation. Then calculate the mass of ammonia made from 84 grams of nitrogen. So the first thing that we actually need to do to solve that question is to work out the molar masses of the relevant chemicals. So in this case, the only two we're looking at are nitrogen and ammonia. So the molar mass of nitrogen, which is obviously N2 as its symbols, then it's going to be 2 times the atomic mass of nitrogen, which is 14. So that gives us 28 grams per mole. Then if we do the same for our ammonia, that's got the formula of NH3. So nitrogen has the mass of 14 plus 3 times our hydrogen of 1. So that gives us 17 grams per mole. The next part is we need to rearrange our equation. So we need to work out how many moles we actually have of nitrogen. So we obviously need to know the number of moles, but in the question, they told us the mass in grams being 84, and we've just worked out the molar mass. So all we're going to do is the mass divided by molar mass. So substitute in those numbers, 84 divided by 28, that tells us there are three moles of nitrogen. The next thing we need to do is look at our balanced equation. Now, what we can see in that is that one mole of nitrogen makes two moles of ammonia. So because N2 has no number in front of it, that tells us there is just the one mole of nitrogen. And then on the right hand side, we can see that two in front of our ammonia tells us that we're making two moles. So we have a ratio there. One mole of nitrogen makes two moles of ammonia. So we know that in our question here, we have three moles of nitrogen. So if we're starting off with three, then three times two gives us six moles of ammonia being made. You just need to apply that same ratio from the balanced equation to work out the number of moles of your unknown. The last thing then to do is to just work out the actual question. So we're going to calculate the mass of ammonia that we made. So we go back to our equation at the top. Mass in grams is the molar mass times the amount in moles. So we now know the molar mass of our ammonia. So that is 17. We know that there are six moles of it being made. So 17 times 6 gives us 102 grams. The next two terms we need to understand are excess and limiting reactant. So if we are ever talking about a substance being in excess, then what we actually mean is that the reactant is present in a greater amount than we need it to be. So that, that means that even when the reaction is completed, then there's still surplus left over. The limiting reactant is the one that's present in an amount less than is needed to react completely. So what we actually find then is in terms of determining how much product we make, the limiting reactant is going to be the deciding factor. If you only have a very small amount of limiting reactant, you will only make a very small amount of product. If you double the amount of limiting reactant, you will double the amount of product. The last thing we're going to look at is stoichiometry. When we're referring to the stoichiometry, we're actually describing the relative amounts of each substance that are in a chemical reaction. So the kind of question that we could be asked on stoichiometry is shown in the box here. An oxide of copper is heated with excess hydrogen, H2, forming 6.40 grams of copper and 0 0.900 grams of water. Calculate the balanced equation. So the first thing that we actually need to do is calculate the amount of each measured substance. So in this case, if we look at our question, we've got a measured amount of water and of copper. So the first thing we're going to do is work out the amount in moles of the copper and the amount in moles of our water. So to do that, we go back to our mass divided by molar mass equation. So mass of copper, 6.40 from the question, divided by its molar mass, which we'll get from the periodic table, 
is 63.5. So that gives us an amount of 0 0.10 moles. We'll do exactly the same thing for water. So it's mass 0 0.900 grams from the question divided by its molar mass, which is 18 from the periodic table. And that gives us 0 0.05 moles. The next thing to do is we need to simplify the ratio of those substances. So if we look at our ratio of copper to water, then we've got 0 0.10 to 0 0.05. So if we simplify that down, we're going to have two copper to one water. So the last thing that we do then is we write the balanced equation. So we know that we are making two moles of copper. So on the right hand side there, you put your two in front of the symbol for copper, Cu, and one mole of water. So H2O just without the number in front, because we don't write ones when it's just the one. Now, from that, we then need to work out our reactants. So the question told us that we've got an excess of hydrogen, H2, so you can put that one in. And the only unknown then is the oxide of copper. So looking at our actual equation there, in terms of our products, we've got two copper atoms, two hydrogen and one oxygen. Now, if we look at our reactants, we've got the two hydrogens, so they're cancelled out. That leaves us with two coppers and one oxygen. So that's obviously going to form our copper oxide. And when you write the formula, you need to have the little subscript 2 after the symbol for copper, the Cu, because that's how we then end up with our final copper oxide formula is by making sure that we still have that balanced equation. So as opposed to being given the formula and then you doing the balancing by placing numbers in front with the stoichiometry, you're almost working backwards. So you've got the actual balance bit there. And all you then need to do is work out the formula of your unknown.